while there's a lot of external stress about college we're also we're also trying to just get the last bit of high school memories and squeeze it all out before you know it officially ends and Mm -hmm. you know while it's all a stressful process and we're all going through senioritis um there's still like a bittersweet element because every day is the last day Hi everyone, thank you for coming back to listen to us on the podcast. It is me and Haley again, back to the old days. And today we're going to be talking about senior year because I feel like most of our audience is around uh, this kind of age group. We're going to be talking about maybe stress behind college applications, senioritis, uh, the process of becoming independent and everything around that. But to start off, we're going to be sharing some things that we're grateful for because it's probably around Thanksgiving time right now. And it's just a great habit to get into every day to just keep your mental health up and keep gratitude up. So I'll let Haley start first. What are kind of some things that you're grateful for right now? Um, well, I just came back from my friend's home. So I'm definitely grateful for the friends that I have, especially during senior year. They're the only mm-hmm. thing kind of getting me through school right now. Um, and food. Um, yeah. A lot of snacks during studying helps a lot. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> there's that. And then also health is another thing that I wanted to say because, you know, as an athlete, I take that for granted sometimes. Just, you know, in general, being healthy. But um, growing up, never needing to worry too much about like my food energy input is something to be thankful for yeah how about you yeah definitely so I'm in a weird situation right now where I get to uh, decide all of my meals and everything and I'm living in dorms and so that's been really special for me and I definitely agree with you that needing to really take control over your health is a crazy thing to do Mm -hmm. like um I'm trying not to go overboard because obviously that might lead to a lot of body image issues but yeah I'm really thankful and grateful that um I have the access to healthy foods and everything because obviously I live in the UK cost of living crisis is crazy over here Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm also very, very thankful for good food and desserts in general. I had a millionaire shortbread today. Um, British audiences might be a bit more familiar with what it is, but it, it's an, an amazing dessert. Um, yeah, um, I'm feeling good to be here. I'm feeling grateful to be able to share um, stuff on this podcast. And it's, it, I'm also grateful that we have this platform in general. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a bunch of things that I'm grateful for. <laughs> So how has senior year been treating you? It's been a month and um, I'm sure everyone's trying to find the right dynamic and mindset going into this year. So um, yeah, how has it been? Um, So I take the A-level system, the British system. So it's been a bit different. We have we had our like predicted grade mock back in September when I just got back from school. Um, And I feel like with a lot of British schools in general, uh, predicted grades are a very mysterious process in which you don't really know what you're going to get. Obviously, if you've been getting A stars all throughout uh, junior year, senior year, all throughout your like educational period, you'll probably get an A star. But if you've been like varying between A stars and A's, it's kind of weird. So that's uh, a, a huge deal. Most of my summer was spent studying for that as well as because I'm applying for medicine, uh, the medicine admissions test. So that's also something that's going on right now. I think my life has been dominated mostly by revision which is not the best sometimes Mm so what I've liked what I've been doing recently is just making sure that 
one, I'm getting enough food and a sleep because nutrition and health is definitely key in keeping your mental health up as well. But also allowing myself time to just relax. I currently like doing yoga. That's a weird thing I'm getting back into. Um, but, you know, journaling, listening to podcasts, um, you know, sometimes just watching Netflix is, is a great, great way to um, kind of wind down and everything. How is life for you? I'm assuming you're like writing a lot of college essays, all that. Yeah, um, personal statements are a lot harder to write than I thought it would be. Um, I did end up finishing it, but it did take me like I started around July and I thought like, OK, this is too early. I can take my time, relax and just take it day by day. And then, you know, it took me like four months to kind of mm-hmm. get it to a point where I was happy about it. So um, it's it's exciting, but also like it's kind of a moment it's like a moment where every senior student has to go through and it's a moment where you know it kind of shapes how your life will be the next four years which to me like I know you're not supposed to see college that way like but it's to me it's that's kind of how it always has been and so it was really important for me to get my common app right and all that. Um, and also, same with us, predicted grades are kind of like a mysterious process for us, too. We don't get to ever see our predicted grades. Um, so everyone in school is just trying to figure out what their predicted grades are, figure out what their top school choices are. So um, I will say that it's an extremely bonding experience to be able to mm-hmm. kind of stress out together or um like go through it all together as a class um I think it's a little different for us too because we do also take the international a-level system um but we're the only class in the entire school who does the IAL system like there uh, the other people all do DSE um mm-hmm. so for us it's like a it's just 40 people doing the same thing and working towards the same goals. And so I think, yes, it is extremely stressful and, you know, sometimes claustrophobic, but I'm working with, I'm like kind of surrounded by so many people who, you know, have goals that they want to achieve and we're all working hard towards it. Um, yeah. And still playing my squash Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lot of tournaments going on right now so um it is my last year of high school but I'm still kind of doing the same things that I've been doing since forever yeah Yeah. um (laughs) you say that there's like 40 people doing a levels in your school so do you think that it's kind of a more tight-knit community and you guys can give each other support in some sort of way um because you guys are going through the same thing do you think that's something that's really important in this stage of like uh, life as well as in like college applications having people that are going through the same thing and you can be there to support you every step of the way definitely yeah I think to me when I was in the DSE stream like the local Hong Kong system it was very you know, we were all really individualized. We were working on our own thing, um, competing against one another. I'm not saying it's a bad environment to be in, but to me, it was just not the learning style that I needed to help support me. And so moving into a smaller class where I know most of the people um, and we're all, most of the people in the A-level class actually come from our junior school as well. So we are actually, you know, we've been friends for a long time. And so um, it's it's a very, it's to me, like having a support system is really, really important. And I think I found my group of people in that class specifically that, you know, not only helped me, but I was also able to help them 
So we were able to give advice to each other and we became better together, basically. And um, I think the good thing about A-levels for me is that every class is smaller too. So Mm -hmm. for my, I take geography and in my geography class, there's only eight people. So, um, so it's, you know, you know, every one of them individually and we have group chats and we share our notes to each other. We work on the same Google Docs during class. And for Mm -hmm. us, yeah, for us, that's just, um, it's a new experience for me because of this entirely new system that I'm working with. And it feels more college-like than uh, high school in DGS in Hong Kong. Mm. Like, to me, it, yeah. Like, you kind of, for once, go to school, excited to meet friends, making reels together, trying to have fun while still going through it all together. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I think that's amazing that you guys have kind of developed a more collaborative atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that, especially in our school, they told us they told the medics to really stick together. And um, like we had group chats and all that. But obviously, as it gets to the actual application season, I feel like most people started to get really um competitive secretive Mm -hmm. about their own applications and it's just great to hear that you guys are still a community because I feel like especially in more hyper selective uh, programs it gets uh really pressurized and that's not the best mentally for anyone but yeah outside of kind of college apps and everything how are we kind of feeling about the transition into adulthood and, um, you know, having to potentially leave the country, leave leave the, the nest that I guess you haven't been out of ever. So mm-hmm. uh, how how is that feeling? Um, it's it's definitely really really exciting to think about the fact that you know it's in less than a year, we're all going to be moving out potentially and kind of going through the infamous college life that we've been wanting to go through since we were really young. Um, To me, I think I put a lot of pressure into college being a good thing because throughout my high school life, I've worked so hard to get into a good college that I kind of in my head I told myself that it doesn't matter what how hard things are right now college life will be better and it'll be worth it um so I know it's not like the best mindset to be in um but it was you know the only thing that got me through the last four years and that's why like I'm having a really really hard time trying to change that mindset going into college because I don't want my I don't want me to overhype college that much and it end up being a different experience than I than what I imagined um so right now it's just trying to you know reel it in a little bit um (laughs) and also just um yeah and also thinking about family for once, finally leaving. Um, I do go to the U.S. a lot, and so it's not like it's a completely foreign place for me, Um, but it's, you know, it's so scary to not have your home base anymore and um, to kind of be out there and independent and working towards your own future goals. So, yeah. There's a lot to uncover and unpack. And I think that's kind of the only thing I've been working on therapy recently because it's, you know, I won't have my therapist anymore when I go to college anymore anyways. Um, I can find a new one, of course, but um, she was, she is a very good one and I've been working with her for a while. And so, yeah, how about you? 
Yeah, um, I, there's a lot to pick out from all of that. I think one really main thing was that um, I feel like so many high schoolers really romanticize the idea of going to university. And um, well, obviously, it's a good thing because I feel like that got me through a lot of years as well. Exactly. Yeah. But when you get to the point where university is not such a like far reaching thing, it can actually be a real detriment because you realize that there are a lot of like disadvantages and just bad things that come with being in uni. You're like independent. You have to. The independence can be a whole rant in and of itself. <laughs> Yeah. but it it it's not as good as it seems and mm -hmm. I feel like that can be much worse the transition when you're in senior year like the it just comes crashing down to you that you know college isn't all that great and I feel like our audiences especially if you're younger should keep that in mind really research university and and don't romanticize it mm -hmm. as much because it, it will not be as good as you think it is and yeah with therapy and all of that I am um, I don't do therapy anymore but I definitely think that universities are placing a lot more emphasis on like mental health access and care which I'm really excited about um I I'm a bit concerned about like universities in the UK because obviously everyone's striking cost of living everything but I'm sure that mental health services will still be intact and I really do encourage most students if not all to seek some sort of professional help if they need it because it is like a huge transition mm -hmm. whether it be like financially emotionally educationally and just in life so yeah um but other than that um because I grew up, like, I left to go to the UK when I was 13. So that was, like, a, a while ago. So I thought I have a grasp on um, independence because I've been away from my family for so long. But I feel like going to university is much different from going to secondary school and that in secondary school, you still have parental figures mm -hmm. in the form of teachers that and in our school at least we have like house mistresses all of that who act as a guide for you who act as basically your parents and you can go to them for a lot of support but I don't think that's true in university because you you have professors that yes they can guide you but they won't be able to like hold your hand through the entire way you have RAs and futures if you you are in this this side of the world and yes they might have a closer relationship with you and be your personal tutor as they say but they won't be as much of a comfort as any other kind of parental figure you've had in your life has been and obviously there, there's that thing about you have to start paying taxes you have to start really caring about your money and I think that is a huge thing that people overlook when preparing for university, because as much as I know lots of my friends and myself included are privileged enough that we can have our parents pay for most of our university tuition. But well, speaking for myself, there are some parts that cannot be covered and that reconciliation of me needing to put in the effort and either seek out scholarships or work or do other stuff is a bit of a adjustment because mm -hmm. obviously I've never had to do this in my life if I I had a part-time job in the past but it was not something that was like a live or die situation in a sense I get that now it's not a live or die situation but the stakes are definitely more intense yeah. so I feel like everything is more heightened because it feels like you're really stepping into your independence and stepping into the stage of your life where everything really needs to be decided by you and yeah sometimes I will see kids 
who are doing their GCSEs, which when we were doing, when I was doing our GCSEs, I was already on this podcast and I was feeling very stressed at the time. But genuinely looking back now, I should have told myself to just chill out because that amount of stress or the kind of transition that I was going through then is nothing compared to what I will go through now and what I will go through in the future. So, yeah, it sounds very pessimistic. I'm sure there's a lot of good things that will happen in university. But, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure our viewers know that, like, it's not always as good as it sounds. <laughs> yeah, um, I think, like, going into college, you get, like, you know, you're you're an adult basically and you're gonna have to figure life out again for the first time you're like a baby adult like you know you know nothing but you know everything and you know what you need to do but it's also so hard to start implementing it and trying to figure out a new work routine that works for you and trying to you know care about money you know instead Mm -hmm. of relying solely on your parents anymore and um, I think, like, while we are very privileged to be able to afford university right now, um, there's still, like, the future ahead of you. And once you're once you step out of college, you can choose to live on your own already. And that's when, you know, things start to get real. You're kind of doing everything, as you said, for a live, or die, live or die situation, basically. Um, and I think what you said is completely right about the IGCSEs. Like, I didn't do the IGCSEs, but I was so stressed throughout middle school. It was intense. And yeah. I think, I mean, at that moment, we'll definitely think that we're, like, the most stressed out as we <laughs> ever has been. And it feels like a, you know, end of the world situation. But um, we're you know, as we grow up, we're going to keep having these moments and we're going to keep experiencing a little bit of pressure, a little bit of stress. And um, so, yeah, college is about having fun, but keeping the balance between trying to be independent, trying to get your get your stuff together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, um, yeah. And I think a lot of people in the past has romanticized college as a place to party or have fun or be out of your parents reach for once and you can finally do whatever you want to do um and while that's half true there's also a whole other side that you know we have to explore on our own and experience on our own to really understand yeah yeah uh i think a bit of like like, sort of advice as someone who left obviously the household earlier and this applies I would say more so for immigrants or international students especially is that sometimes you really should put your interests above um, what you think your parents might want Um, obviously as Haley said college is and can be fun there will be a lot of parties and a lot of everything and as much as we're talking about the negatives right now I think you should definitely like just go ham on it for the first few months because um the transition period is hard and I feel like if you need a release in some sort of way it's still really good to I don't know get some sort of release if you get what I mean Look, like, we can we I, can do it responsibly. Yeah, we can... yeah, we'll do it, do it <laughs> legally and responsibly. But I feel like you, yeah, don't. Um, I saw this like TikTok a while ago about a boy who basically, um, he in his own words sold out because he went into tech or finance or something because he wanted to support his family. And he said that he was happy doing it. And if you end up going into a field that's lucrative and uh, you're doing it both to support your family and you're happy in doing it, I think that's a great idea. But 
there are a lot of people who want to be creatives who mm. want to do all their stuff and I also don't think that you should be too stressed out about needing to you know follow your parents' wishes in a way I'm going all over the place right now but yeah I think I, I'm trying I'm trying to find a little connection <laughs> in between everything I'm talking about but it's not working yeah, it's fine <laughs> Um, I think, okay, so when we're talking about finding some sort of relief or going and trying to have fun during the first few months of the first few weeks of college, just trying to get the transition period a little smoother and do whatever helps you feel more comfortable in your environment. I think one thing that we kind of, well, with parents never really talk about is also the drinking like mm-hmm. I, I want to talk about it here because I think it's really important to kind of before you go to college also find your limit and your tolerance with alcohol I think because when you first step in foot into college I think there's so there's a lot of like things happening around you especially at your first international party and so yep. knowing how much you can tolerate and how much um, you can handle is really, really important because you don't want to be figuring out, figuring it out, um, you know, when you're there and for the first time. Um, so that's a kind of like a big thing that I feel like not a lot of adults talk a lot about because we're still 17 right now at this stage so they think we may be too young to start thinking about this um but you know you're gonna be exposed to it during college so um yeah having fun while being safe is also really important um yeah and then um yeah go ahead no sorry I was just saying like I personally I'm in a school where there's a lot of underage drinking and even though I don't partake in it I don't think it's the right way of thinking if you're going into it with a fully abstinent attitude because as much even if you're like super mentally strong whatever you're probably gonna be peer pressured into doing Mm -hmm. something like obviously don't do coke like that is a given But if it like there's someone going to give you like a sip of alcohol and it is really hard to say no. But if you keep on abstaining from doing it, like you've seen in our post, like in our various different posts, it's actually very it's it's the action of abstinence makes it much easier for an addiction to happen Mm -hmm. So to be safe maybe just have one or two sips of alcohol every now and then instead of abstaining and then maybe binge drinking in the future because that is much more dangerous than yeah little little things but yeah I please agree. continue yeah. with yeah um i wanted to talk about the other point you were making but then i kind of forgot what you said um, um i was talking about oh um pleasing your parents Oh, right. Yes. Um, Yeah, I think when you were talking about the part where we should do things not completely to what our parents want and instead try to focus on what we want for the next four years of our lives, I think that's really important because, you know, moving forward, it's going to be your life and you're going to be taking control of everything and I and by everything I mean like literally everything after college and so um yeah I think college especially in the U.S. I will say because you spend the first two years you can go the first two years with an undecided major you can explore so many options um within the college and you can find the stuff you want to do what you find more interested in and then decide on a major um I think that's why I personally like the U.S. not necessarily the education system but just how they format the Mm -hmm. you know the way 
Mm -hmm. um, students get to decide what they want to study is you know to me it's a better way of trying to get me involved in my own future and my own life moving forward um so yeah I think you know you don't want to be stuck doing something that you don't enjoy doing for the next 50 years of your life you know 100 yeah. I that's actually I'm not sure if we mentioned this in the past but I definitely talked about how I didn't like the UK education system is that you have to choose your A-level subjects when you're 16 and if you're not like me and you all <laughs> because I chose at a, a a larger number of A levels than most students would take I think the national average is three in our school the national average that in our school the average is four so you're really stuck on a few subjects and you have to choose them by 15 or 16 and you're basically stuck with that if you stay in the UK system forever and I think that's why you see so many um, influencers, especially uh, in the NHS, who mm -hmm. decide to quit. Obviously, first of all, the NHS sucks. The, the doctors should be the doctors should be paid more, in mm -hmm. my opinion. But also, they were stuck in a career path that they chose at sixteen. At that time they could have been very definitely forced by their parents to do a lot of stuff or, um, you know, your brain hasn't fully developed and you haven't had enough life experiences to truly understand what you want to do with your life. Yeah. So yeah, I do think that it's a bit dangerous to go, um, you know, straight into picking your career path at 16. So yeah. that's also why I quite like the American system and that you get to choose what you want to do um, mm -hmm. much later on in life. And like, it doesn't, you don't get penalized for it in any way, which is nice. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but with with our school, we also, uh, we take four A-level subjects. It's a mm -hmm. requirement. And so, um for a lot of my friends when they start working on their personal statement for the UK um they have to talk about why they chose their A level subjects and i think to me that's very bizarre because um well first of all our school didn't have a lot of options because we're such a small A level circuit um and it's not the main curriculum that our school focuses on so there wasn't a lot of options for us to choose from specifically and that's kind of why I chose geography like it wasn't something that I wanted to do it has nothing to do with what I was interested in but it was just because I didn't want to take chemistry and I could either take chemistry or geography and while it turned out okay for me um, I just feel like you know if I were to go to the um, UK system and write a personal statement and then I have to mention why I wanted to take geography and how it links to the subject I want to take in university to me that just seems a little bit off and yeah it's just not um it's very different from the UK system a US system that I'm used to um so yeah yeah I definitely think that's a huge source of stress for a lot of people recently about I know a lot of people in my year had ep epiphanies about shit like I, I'm i not doing the A-levels that I want for the career path mm -hmm. that I want yeah. but they when they were writing their personal statement they realized I can't go back like I've chosen my A-levels and this is where I'm gonna have to end up and I feel like that's such an unfortunate process but at the same time I really like to reassure a lot of people that there are conversion programs out there. You can convert into law. You can do graduate medicine. Um, you can do apprenticeships. My friend did all languages for um, her A-levels. And then she was able to get a law apprenticeship as well as a computer science apprenticeship. And now she's doing law. So there's a lot of things you can do. And investment backing is always an option. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah you can always you can always pivot you can always pivot yeah. like I 
uh, as much as we've brought this up so much today, it's definitely not a big deal. And if you are in the process of choosing A levels or anything like that, obviously just go with your gut, go with, with what you like. And it might determine your life for a few more years, but definitely don't think that you're stuck on anything forever. I think as much as we've kind of griped about a lot of things in uh, today's like podcast, especially about like transitioning and becoming independent and choosing career paths, I think we're kind of not acknowledging the fact that so many people have gone through this process before Mm -hmm. you know there are i love using tiktok as an example but on tiktok i love seeing i I love seeing people who are struggling to reconcile the fact that they're going into their 30s because you know there are people in their 40s 50s -hmm. every single time you have a transition in life you're going to go through the same processes and every single time you go through a transition you look back at the previous one and you'll feel like oh that was nothing so I think that's also something that we can hold on to um if you're in senior year you can look back into middle school and think about those transitions and feel like those are nothing so maybe in a few years you'll look back at this and it will be like as easy as pie but obviously do seek professional help and with any financial decisions make sure you actually get them checked first (laughs) yeah um I think whatever we felt as a as like a 15 year old trying to go through whatever we were trying to get through it was it was all valid feelings and emotions and I understood why I felt that way and everything but I think yeah looking back it it, well I will say it's worth it just because it ended well but at the same time I feel like I I didn't really necessarily have to put my mental health in that state in order to get to where I am today and um yeah so definitely yeah um you go ahead I was just... I don't know I um okay let's talk about senior year yeah a little bit and yeah, yeah happy things a little yeah. more on the upbeat side yeah um so let's go back to senior year a little bit more and let's talk a little bit about um the emotions the highs and the lows and how you're feeling, how you want to end this year and expectations and stuff. Yeah, so um, senior year, as as much as we've been talking about it in today's episode, I haven't really put much thought (laughs) into, I guess, the future. I'm planning about it and everything. All I know that all I know is that I've been taking it day by day and I feel like everyone should do it as well. Um, obviously, if you are doing uh, really, you know, admissions tests or anything like that, can feel really hard right now to get through past papers, all of that. But, you know, in the end, it will be worth it. And yeah, that's kind of mainly what I've been doing. I mean... I don't know what you're going through. <laughs> um, is it, how is it over there? I, um, my experience is a little different from the rest of my friends. And so I, you know, I see what they go through every day just to try and ha- control whatever they can control. Because at the point, At this point, there's a lot of things outside of your control, including the fact that you can't see your predicted grades. Um, I think there's a lot of uncertainties going into senior year. And while that's all going on, um, I do believe that we're going back to like the community of 
the A level class that I have, I think we're reminiscing a lot on our last, like our last time mm-hmm. going through um first day of school together, the last time celebrating any birthdays or celebrations, holidays, etc. And so the um so the last so uh mid autumn festival just passed and we ended up as a friend group we went out like at 10 p.m. at night just to make glow sticks and eat mooncakes yeah. together. Um, and we plan on going to Ocean Park, like the theme park in Hong Kong, um, Ocean Park's haunted house for Halloween for the first time and last time. So it's while there's a lot of external stress about college, we're also we're also trying to just get the last bit of high school memories and squeeze it all out before you know it officially ends and Mm -hmm. you know while it's all a stressful process and we're all going through senioritis um there's still like a bittersweet element because every day the last day sorry um i like okay i hear about senioritis but I feel like that's such a non-applicable thing for both of our educational programs because we have, um, well, at least in the UK, we have conditional offers. So we mm-hmm. can't go through senioritis because we have to continue grinding yeah. till the end. But I'm assuming for you with US college admissions, you kind of don't have to do that because once you have that offer, like senior right just kicks in because you don't have mm-hmm. to study anymore and so yeah. how how does that feel because I I don't yeah. I would never know <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and uh, conditional offers suck and I just don't like them the <laughs> fact that you know they will accept you only because only if you get like a certain grade to me is you know very stressful um but because I'm a student athlete, I finished the process a lot earlier than everyone else. And right now, with college acceptance, you just don't really know what you're doing now. Like for the past, for the past six, seven. Okay, so I've been playing squash for ten years. So for the past ten years of my life, I've been waiting for this moment, you know. And um, I think to me, it's more so because my parents put me into squash because of the fact that I can get potentially recruited. <laughs> Wait. They, they told me that like five, like three years ago <laughs> when I was in like form four, form three-ish. So I was playing tennis and I got, I, I was playing tennis until like six years old. And then they started realizing that squash was one of the big sports where there's college recruitment um and so we switched and I seemed to be pretty good at it according to coaches back then and so we continued we pushed and we saw results and so here we are (laughs) um so it for the past like ever since I knew that because in the past I think my parents made it such that um It was a change that was made like from tennis to squash because tennis is an outdoor sport and squash is an indoor sport. So it's just like less sun, less mosquitoes and stuff. So that's how Mm -hmm. I was explaining it to other people. But, you know, there's deeper meaning behind it. And um, a lot of therapy sessions came out of that that realization. Um, But like to me, I've been doing this sport for college basically and I needed to now that you know hashtag senioritis um I need to figure out (laughs) what I'm what I want to achieve coming out of senior year like I am a person that has really high expectations for myself and so this means that for a levels I do want to get like for a stars just as much as anyone else would um but it's hard because you're there and as long as your grades don't slip like too much you're basically safe and yeah so it's 
it's scary because you don't know how to find the balance between senioritis and trying to still keep your like motivation high enough for you to get through the rest of the year um so I think for me senioritis is very very true and it's a like I'm a month in and I'm still trying to figure out what I should prioritize and what I need the most um especially because I had such a tough time last year trying to get trying to be a straight A student while still keeping my squash up in order to communicate with coaches um for the possibility of getting into a good college and so now that I'm just done it's just a very burnt out experience for me right now and Mm -hmm. um yeah so it's an it's a bit of adjusting to do it's a different kind of mindset that I have to tune yeah do you think you were burnt out because I feel like a lot of people in this process get to like submitting their applications and then like finalizing their offers and they realize that they've spent the last like two or three years chasing towards this goal with no end and now that they're done with it they're actually burnt out and it's not that they don't have motivation it's just they physically cannot do it anymore do you think that also kind of factors into it yeah I think I'm I'm not sure if burnt out would be the right term to use but you feel very very tired like you feel like you spent so much energy just trying to get through the last three years and you don't even realize it until you're done with the process and for me that was the hardest adjustment to make because burnt out burnt out for me burnt outs for me usually um they kind of die down after like a summer break or a good holiday um but this one just doesn't it just doesn't stop it's just there for a longer period of time and um yeah to me it's a it's a harder version of being burnt out because there's so much you want to do but there's so little you actually need to do at this point for me um so yeah yeah definitely I this kind of goes into a point that obviously you got into a school that you really like but lots of people don't have that opportunity and I feel like it's gonna be like I know lots of people have gone through the process they don't get into their dream school and they still manage to come out of it and you know continue with their lives but especially since our our school has had cases where people have done impulsive things because of university applications not going through. Do you have any thoughts about like that sort of stuff about what happens if someone doesn't get into university? Because obviously I, I I can't I don't know anything right now. I don't know exactly what to say. But yeah, I just I don't know. Is there anything you'd like to say? I think um it's a very I wouldn't necessarily call my path right now privileged because I did invest so much time into being a student athlete so um while I see kind of everyone struggling with college applications right now my I try to help them the best I can to my abilities like give them ideas for personal statements or um brainstorm college choices with them um but one of the scariest things is not getting into any of them and I think, um, you know, there's not there's not much I can say either, but 
one of the kind of main things that we have to remember is that we all are going to go to college no matter where you end up going and um people who you know people who don't go to good colleges or dream colleges will still end up having a really good career path and I think we place a lot of emphasis on dream schools um as teenagers we all have secretly we all have a secret like a sorry secretly we all have like a dream school that we share or we don't share to other people um and I think most of the people don't share because they just are afraid of that rejection um Mm -hmm. and I think while it's like I mean it's a process everyone goes through and not everyone will get into their dream school it's a dream school for a reason right and I think we all I mean we're in a different kind of position to be in because we go to one of the best local schools in Hong Kong and so whatever happens we all will have that like a single school that will want students from our school and I think that's a a big like comforting thing to know for a lot of students in my school um but yeah I mean it's going to be really scary when application results come back and everyone knows where they're going for the next four years of their lives um and I don't know maybe we'll do another episode when that time comes but for now Mm -hmm. it's it's daunting but people are also just trying to put in a few safety schools um but yeah and I guess like if things don't work out gap years also exist um so Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of people, this is what I've had to think about recently, is um, about taking multiple gap years potentially or just doing a lot of career transitions, especially since I want to go into the medical field. And one thing that I think a lot of people are scared of is that they'll be looked down upon in any way. And I don't think that's mm-hmm. necessarily true. So many people take gap years. There could be for a ton of reasons. Some people take gap years even when they have uni offers just to like clear their mind because obviously it is a really stressful process of going through 12 years of schooling. And I don't think anyone should be ashamed of taking a gap year. In terms, there are obviously other worries about gap years. I know one big one for me was the finances. So, you know, bag yourself a job offer or like an internship. But at the end of the day, it's probably going to be fine. (laughs) It's Um, going to be. (laughs) Yeah. No, yeah, it, it, it is. It will be fine. And um, I don't think it's inherently a bad thing to take time off your schooling um, and do whatever you want to do, whether it be like writing a book, volunteering. Uh, for me, it's like working at a restaurant because that's something I really want to do. And that's cool. I think, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I just think that that's a very viable option. And I think that we should kind of stop stigmatizing the concept of needing to take a gap year because it's frankly normal. And if you're in the US and you're applying for medical school, that is the case. Like Mm -hmm. it is known that you're probably going to have to take one or two years of a gap year between undergraduate and medical school. And I think we should have that as like, the default for most people Mm -hmm. and I feel like that would take a lot of the load off of you know students in secondary school of getting into a good uni because they know like they have multiple chances or you know they can switch career paths that they want um when they realize that they don't like what they're doing and I yeah I'm, I'm a huge proponent for 
um, gap years. So, yeah. Yeah, I will say that gap years just aren't as common in Hong Kong. So I mm-hmm. I never knew that there was like a bad connotation towards gap years. Like I thought it was like a um figuring well, it's out because like finance. people are like, oh uh if you go into a gap if you're doing a gap year, it's probably because you didn't get into like your dream uni. So yeah, you're just okay, taking that makes your off to like reapply. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, to me, I I saw gap years as like a way to make money, try to learn how to be in, independent before going to college. Um, but anyways, um, I think an- another thing that you brought up is the feeling of being ashamed. And I want to emphasize that towards the application process too, not just gap years. I think the school ultimately didn't de- 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 sorry the school doesn't ultimately define you and wherever mm-hmm. you end up going you will succeed as long as you try hard and i think we shouldn't be judging people based on where they go to college or oh, which schools accepted them um so I think that's another I mean that's also a reason why people don't say what their dream schools are because they're scared and afraid that people will you know say you're not good enough for that school um but while you well maybe you got waitlisted or you got rejected from a school I think it's still so important to know that you have a lot of things within your control and you can mm-hmm. turn it around or you know, take gap years or um, figure out another way to do what you you always wanted to do. And wherever you go to college doesn't define you as a person or doesn't define mm-hmm. your next four years or your, you know, life. Um, yeah. And I think as friends, supporting other people who don't get into their dream schools it's also really important to include them in celebrations mm-hmm. and all that because they did work hard to try to get to where they want to be. Um, and, you know, we're all working through common college applications right now. And so we're all going through the same process. We all are feeling extremely stressed. And no matter the outcome, this is something worth celebrating because we put so much effort into it. Yeah, one I one hundred percent agree. Like we've said this in our success episode, but your college in the end quite mm-hmm. literally does not matter. Um, uh, like as I said just now, you can get a lot of like graduate degrees, conversion degrees, and oh, sorry, whoa. <laughs> um, if you get like a good, you know, you can get a Harvard degree whenever you want in your life it's it's not the be all end all Mm -hmm. if you don't get into harvard for like undergraduate or anything or cambridge or anything so yeah it's i feel like we put a lot of stress on your degree as school students and I think there definitely is some sort of emphasis on that in life but it's definitely not as much as you think there is yeah. and obviously we're still young but as I've seen throughout the years is that there are a lot of things that we think are super important but they're literally just specks of dust in the grand scheme of everything yeah so I think all in all, obviously, we're still young. We haven't gone through everything in life. But what my biggest takeaway from this episode would be um, just to take it all slow and know that everything is going to be okay in the future. Um, your mental health is definitely something you should keep in mind for everything and honestly that is the only thing that you should be caring about not you your parents wishes 
not um you know what other people will think of you if you're not comfortable with doing something whether it be applying to university whether it be taking a gap year or whatever don't do it only do it if your heart truly is into it and I know this process is very very daunting and just know that there are a lot of resources out there for you both for your mental health as well as just for you know university applications and all of that so yes. definitely don't face anything by yourself but yeah, yeah that's kind of my takeaway yeah I think for me what really got me through college processes was to control whatever I got to I can control um so I did already mention this in the episode but I think controlling what you can control is so important because if if I spend like hours thinking about things that are outside of my control then I end up being really stressed and um it ends up being like a really unpleasant process overall and while no matter what the college application process is going to be stressful um controlling what you can control which includes like your emotions what you're going to do tonight to try to fix your problems or um kind of yeah your next actions basically that will help you to get to where you want to be or solve whatever issues you are having or hiccups you are having with your application process um i think it's a much more like realistic way of dealing with everything um to be able to take a like a take a deep breath and think about what you need what you don't need is very important and listening to your body listening to your mind knowing what you want next and trying to figure it all out this could be through therapy through journaling through listening to podcasts like this one um or just trying to learn from other people's experiences online um is really important and remember that this is a process that every single person goes through um so you will always get to the other side no matter what and you will get through it alive and well so yeah I think keeping a positive mindset trying to kind of go in head first fearlessly is also really important so yeah um, I hope everyone listening kind of had a peace of mind after this podcast and um, yeah. yeah. If you're going through the process, um, you can definitely reach out to any one of us. Our podcast is hosted on Spotify where you can send in voice memos. So if you ever want us to listen to any of that, that's totally okay. And if you been through the process we'd also love to hear your thoughts so definitely reach out to us and if there's anything you'd love to add about uh senior year or college admissions and everything we'd really love to hear your thoughts but uh that is all we have for today and we are so excited to be back in the podcasting group and we hope to be able to make a few more podcasts in the near future but thank you guys so much for listening today and We'll see you guys very soon.